today we're going to talk about especially the 2D metaverse. Uh, especially when people think about the metaverse, the first thing that comes up in their minds, it's always like these 3D environments where people, just like uh, before uh, with uh, Frame VR, where people interact in this uh, virtual reality, either with their devices or using um, the headsets. Uh, what me, uh, what Meras and I instead trying doing here was taking a different approach. Uh, and I'm going to explain here the, why we decided to uh, follow this specific pattern. Okay. So, uh, well, you already gave us a, a pretty nice introduction. Thank you for that. Uh, it's me uh, working in public schools in Japan, especially elementary school, and Marasa yes. working university. Hi, Marasa. Thanks. Thank you, uh, everyone, for being here with us. And we're excited to share what we've done in our classes with you regarding uh, immersive learning in the 2D metaverse. Yes. So I'll first give the floor to Nick to tell us about his context and I'll continue from uh, after he's finished. Please. Thank you. So uh, we're going to start uh, why we're talking. About. So what the main goal here is not to uh, just think of online teaching as a way to uh, kind of like uh, to kind of like change the setting because of COVID. We wanted to try a different approach. And our goal here was to kind of like foster a new kind of skills, remote collaboration. Uh, it's something that uh, it keeps uh, growing also in, uh, in the industry level, uh, in society. Nowadays, more and more companies, despite uh, COVID closures ending, uh, they're still uh, relying on this kind of new approach to working, where people are working from different locations or from their homes. So when we, as a teacher, when I think about my students, I'm always like, okay, so what skills do they need when they get there, when they start working? And this has become a very solid uh, uh, skill that they will have to use or might even change by then, but it's definitely going to move forward from this step. So uh, what we're looking here is also how can we create this virtual reality where students can interact and collaborate with each other using the most common apps. Uh, in this case, especially in Japan, uh, Google apps are pretty uh, popular, but this is just an example. Any kind of on, uh, app that works in a cloud can be embed, embed in this kind of system. So in this case, uh, what we've worked for, with was the Google Suite for uh, Workplace. So uh, again, we're talking about public schools. So we're talking about a place uh, where funds are limited. Uh, and it, we need to think about our users. We're talking about young learners. So it's not like we can throw anything at them and be like, OK, now use it. They have pretty limited skill sets in general. Uh, so when we need to bring something new, innovate, we need to consider a number of things. Uh, first of all, uh, schools now have uh, uh, given students their own device, but they come with very low specs. So thinking of connecting uh, headsets is basically impossible, both in terms of uh, financial support, but also in terms of uh, system environment. Uh, then we need to consider that whatever we need to use for this kind of uh, new setup, uh, so no additional hardware nor software. And it has to be something very easy to implement. If we're thinking of creating this as a standard where teachers can easily start using this uh, new system, it has to be something that it can pick up pretty easily. And then it has to have a clear goal, both for the students and the teachers. So uh, I'm going to start, we're going to look at this from two different contexts. We're going to look at my context with his primary education, and then Maras is going to continue with the university. Uh, in my case, uh, we decided to uh, connect students uh, which were living remotely, uh, especially in my area. I live in Nagano Prefecture. Uh, so there are many schools that are very far away. And some schools uh, have like in one classroom, you only have three students. So how can we allow those students to still foster their communicative skills and collaborative skills with other people without moving around? 
Uh, and we decided to use uh, a less, uh, basically a unit from a textbook. So not just uh, standalone lessons, but uh, focusing on one unit, which is uh, considered of eight uh, as eight hours. And through this, they would all of the students have to work together to reach the unit goal. In this case, uh, basically we have five elementary schools, uh, one full textbook unit. And the unit goal in this case is to think about our food. That's the title of the unit. And in order to complete their goal, basically students need to consider both the production areas of food and also consider health balance. So for example, um, in the end, they would have to create a menu. And this menu would have to have, okay, so we have rice, rice is from Niigata. And rice is in the yellow group. They have the health groups here in Japan, the red group, yellow group, and green group, depending on what kind of food they're talking about. So uh, this is foreign language education. So the students are not uh, fluent in English, but they're also learning the language as they go. So we decided to take a, kind of a hybrid approach where for four lessons, we focus on the language in the classroom. And for four lessons, we have the students collaborate towards the final goal together. And the fun part of this is not only we're connecting students that are usually just by themselves and connecting with different schools, but we're also allowing for uh, share uh, for them, giving up them the opportunity to share what they're uh, about their areas. So basically, in the end, this menu is going to be created by the typical foods from each area put together and then shared to every location. So basically, you will have a specific uh, main dish from one area, a side dish from another area, and like drinks from a different one. And they're all going to do this together inside the metaverse. In this case, we've used a gather town, which is a 2D environment that looks like a video game. Uh, students work in groups, so they all log in and move to their desks. And then they use uh, slides, Google Slides that have been put on their desks. As you can see, it's very visual. It's very easy to understand. The students create their own avatars and they just move around depending on their groups. When they move sit to their groups, each area is a breakout room and they can collaborate together inside the space. Uh, one thing which also connects to uh, Marasa's presentation is that in this environment, uh, avatars have a really uh, huge impact on empowering students' communication because one, it feels for them, and this is comments that we've uh, uh, got from the students, for them, it feels very natural. They're just uh, going towards these, uh, their friends and starting to connect together and talk together. But also allows them to work on self-expression, kind of based on the feeling. They can change their attire, their clothes, and so on. But also helps uh, students and teachers with classroom dynamics because the teachers see where the students are and they just give them very simple directions just like they would be inside of the classroom. Marasa, you want to continue from here? Thanks very much. Yes, thank you, uh, thank you, Nick. And uh, so, yes, in my context, most of what Nick previously mentioned applies, um, except that while well, my students are university undergraduate students and most of them um, so far, beginning from April this year, we're in the second semester of this academic year here in Japan, um, have been Japanese um, learners of English as a foreign language, meaning that, well, like Nick said, there is an element of learning about academic skills, which was the focus of my class, but also doing that in English, which is the foreign language of the students. Um, I started uh, teaching this class from April this year, and I'm in the second semester doing that uh, with more students um, starting from October. And I've done online synchronous classes on Gather Town, similar to Nick. Um, and so in this course, the goal is to um, develop students' fundamental academic skills um, in the areas of reading, writing, and presentation. And to do that, um, I have tried to create collaborative tasks as much as possible that would get the students to, first of all, talk and communicate to one another, 
and also to be able to work on a collaborative task together, again, using uh, shared documents or other apps that allow them for group work. Um, I have adopted a flipped uh, learning approach uh, in my classes, meaning that the students usually either read an article or watch one or two videos before class so that they can grasp what the content of that particular lesson will be about. So when they come to class, they will actually have already, um, they already have an idea of what that particular lesson will be about, but they need more hands-on practice, especially when it comes to writing reports, for example, in English or doing presentations or academic reading and so forth. And um, along uh, with Gather, I also use our LMS uh, platform, uh, our learning management system, which is Blackboard Learn. Uh, this class, by the way, these classes, I teach them uh, at Osaka University. Um, um, and so the system that's used by our school is Blackboard Learn. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, I do synchronous classes on Gather. So I'm going to, in the rest of my uh, the time that I've got left, show you a video that I created from uh, one of the lessons that I taught recently. I know that in two minutes, the chime will go <laughs> at my school. But so if you hear that sound, please know that it's just the beginning of another <laughs> class here. So please ignore that sound. Apologies. There's no way I can escape that as long as I'm on campus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think you should now be able to view my screen. It's a time-lapse video, so I'll stop from time to time not to tire your eyes. And as you can see, well, in this scene, the students uh, are appearing as avatars. So if I play the video, you would be able to see that they keep coming in. And uh, for my classes, I usually take attendance in this area that looks like a game arcade side of the uh, virtual space, the students just use a Google form uh, to sign up their names. And then afterwards, you're going to see that in the next few um, the next few seconds, they, they all come to this area on the left, which I have come to call Padlet area. And this means that there have been Padlet uh, Padlets that are embedded into these boards that the students get close to. And once they do that, they can press X, which is the interaction button on this platform, to open up the Padlet. And this is where we start doing a recap of what they learned before every lesson. So if they watch the video, let's say, on writing academic reports in English and they learned about things, we try to just... Um, do a recap of what they learned about. And all of this is anonymous. And if you're familiar with the context of Japan, students may not always be very uh, willing to openly uh, share their comments. But since this is anonymous, I think many of them tend to respond and there's a lot of good interaction going on here. And once we're finished with that, I usually take a few seconds to explain to my students what the task uh, for that particular day will be. And then they move to the upper side of this 2D space, which I have called the classroom area. And similar to what Nick showed us, there are breakout areas which the students get into. And once they do that, there is usually some form of shared document that or uh, any app that I plan to use on that day that they can uh, all view uh, as a group and every group has got its own document uh, usually or shared space where they can collaborate on. So I usually explain to them what they should do. They sign up their names and uh, I do some screen sharing to tell them what the activity for that particular day will be like. So in this case, uh, we were learning about academic reports and the goal of the day was to work on body paragraphs. So I extracted some topic sentences from a model report that I had access to. And then the students, from what they learned as they watched the videos, were able to actually uh, work as a group and try to complete these uh, body paragraphs based on uh, the ideas that they see here after brainstorming uh, together. So um, as you can see, I 
leader usually try to visit different groups, make sure that all groups are on track, make sure that they understand the goals of the activity and that they're able to communicate with one another, make sure if there are any technical issues or anything that they need support with. And moving on, if I fast forward a little bit, you'll be able to see that as I visit the groups, I do my best to try to give them some comments that will help them uh, keep up with the activity. And um, in this case, I think I keep visiting different groups as you will later on see and try to check their shared document here. And um, toward the end of uh, the class, I usually either ask the students to present what they had uh, done as a group or just I myself take the lead to share with all students in class what every group has done and to try to like do a uh, uh, kind of wrap up of the group activity. So moving on, as you can see, every group, all the students are in kind of breakout areas and they're able to communicate with each other using video and audio and they have the text embedded in that environment, which they can all view together. They can hear each other and communicate through um, audio and video. There's a spatial audio and video in this environment, similar to most um, immersive uh, worlds. And as you get closer to someone or you're with them within a breakout area, uh, you can hear them. Uh, but once you move to another one, you can just uh, be working with the new members there. So yeah, as you can see, because this is from a live lesson, um, so I keep visiting different groups, making sure that everybody's on track. I sometimes talk to them, give them feedback. And um, I can at the same time monitor whether all groups are working together or not. So as you see in this part of the video, wherever there is these speech bubbles appearing on top of people's head, I know that they're all talking and communicating. Hopefully um, they are being uh, they're engaged in the activity. Yeah, and then I go on with presenting sometimes, well, if there's a need to give a lecture, I may do that. Like this time around, I was talking about thesis statements and uh, how to write a strong thesis statement. So I simply shared my own slides. And if I wanted to move a little bit forward. So I usually um, end the lesson with a uh, sharing my own screen and showing the students what they're supposed to be doing for the next class. So that part of the activity is done on our LMS Blackboard Learn. And I show them what their assignments or pre-lesson materials for the next class will be before we finish. But as you can see, all of this, um, what we do in class is embedded into this one environment that unifies everybody in one place. And it's very easy to uh, for them to collaborate. There is sometimes a bit of a learning curve, but in general, I think things have been moving uh, smoothly. Okay, I don't know how well I'm doing with time, but let me just stop sharing here and get back on Zoom. Yes, so we do have, I think, a final slide to share, and that is just to thank you all and also to share our contact. So Nick, if you can pull that up, it will be great. Okay, All thanks right. very much.